Hello and welcome to my channel We Learn by Sharun. I am Shraddha Banode and in this series we are learning synchronous machines and specifically alternator. In today's session we are going to discuss determination of voltage regulation. In previous few sessions we have seen what is voltage regulation how alternator performs on load and phase diagram of dif for different types of load so let's get going direct loading is a method in which we directly load the alternator with the load and then find out the regulation by measuring the terminal voltage but this method is used when you have small loads you but when we talk about bigger alternators like the commercial alternators which ranges up to 500 MVA it is impossible to load alternator physically by that much load to find out the voltage regulation then how will we find out the voltage regulation for such alternators so for such alternators when you cannot find out the voltage regulation with the help of direct loading you have other methods now what are those other methods to find out the voltage regulation so in this session we are going to see two such methods to find out voltage regulation one is the synchronous impedance method also called as emf method and other is the ampere turn method also called as mmf method so in today's session we are going to see synchronous impedance method in detail so for what what are the data required now for both these methods the common data which is required is armature resistance open circuit characteristics and short circuit characteristics whether you want to find out voltage regulation by emf method or mmf method in both the methods you will need this data okay so let's see how to find out this one by one so armature resistance so armature resistance per phase can be easily measured by using either voltmeter ammeter method or by Wheatstone bridge method. We have already studied these methods in measurement. So by using any one of these methods, you can easily find out armature resistance. But when you will find out armature resistance by this method, that resistance will be a DC resistance. Now you must be wondering that resistance is just resistance so how what about dc or ac so basically it it means that when ac current flow when alternating current flows through the resistance at that time there is a effect uh, there is a effect called as skin effect what this skin effect does to the resistance so if suppose ra is the resistance of the armature dc resistance which you obtain from uh, our uh, voltmeter ammeter method or Wheatstone bridge method. Now, when DC current flows through it, the resistance will be as it is. But when AC current flows through is because of the skin effect, the resistance gets increased by 60% and the reason is skin effect. Now, when it is increased by 60%, that time the effective value of the resistance is taken as 1.6 times the DC value. So, whatever value you are getting by our uh, ammeter voltmeter method or Wheatstone bridge method, you always multiply that value by 1.6. Next is to find out open circuit characteristics. Now, to get the open circuit characteristics, uh, you must uh, perform the open circuit test for the alternator and to perform open circuit test what we will do is we will give some mechanical energy through prime mover okay and the field winding will be given dc excitation separately here the field winding is given different D dc supply okay and uh, also field winding is uh, rotated with the help of external prime mover which is moving with the rated speed then the, and then there is this armature windings now this three phase star connected armature windings are open circuited open circuited means there are just voltmeter connected across them okay so connecting a voltmeter is as good as open circuit right now in the comment box you will write down why connecting a voltmeter gives you open circuit like here you can see even if you are connecting a voltmeter across these two lines we are saying this is open circuited we are connecting a voltmeter across these two lines we are saying this is open circuited 
So tell me, even after connecting voltmeter across this phases, why we are saying, even, even after connecting a voltmeter across these lines, why we are saying this is open circuited? Write down in the comment box. When you give excitation to the field winding slowly, and you increase the current in the field winding, the voltage gets built up across the armature winding. So what you will do is you will note down this increment in the voltage with the increase in current. You will, note, you will take 5 to 6 readings and then you will plot a graph. Yes, when you will plot a graph between field current and open circuit voltage, the characteristic you will get is called as OCC, that is open circuit characteristics. The field current is gradually increased from zero until you get the open circuit voltage. The graph is between E0 and IF as shown in figure. Right? Now, this is the open circuit characteristics you need to draw. So, this is the second data. First was armature uh, resistance. Second is open circuit characteristics. You got both the things. Now, we will proceed for short circuit characteristics. So, for getting short circuit characteristic, you must perform short circuit test on the alternator. To perform short circuit test on the alternator, we are having this field winding, which is given DC supply uh, through external means, and the field winding is rotated by a prime mover at rated speed. Now this is the armature winding which is short circuited. You can see that we are connecting an armature along with each phase. So if this will give you current through each phase. And uh, even after we are connecting this armature between, we are saying this is short circuited. Again, you will write down in the comment box that why when we are connecting an armature, we say it is short circuited. Okay. So now what again, now what we will do, we will give a DC excitation to field winding, slowly we will increase the field current. As we go on increasing the field current, this current ISC, that is short circuit current, that is armature current starts to flow in the armature winding. Okay, again you will step by step increase the field current, step by step short circuit current will increase and ultimately you will have 5 to 6 readings and when you get the 5 to 6, when you get this 5 to 6 readings, you will plot a graph between IF and ISC. Again, you will plot IF on the x-axis, armature current that is ISC on the y-axis and when you will plot a graph between the two, you will get a straight line which will be called as short circuit characteristics. So, short circuit characteristics is plotted between ISC and IF as shown in figure. Now you got all the three data, you got RS value of armature resistance, you got open circuit characteristics and you got short circuit characteristics as well. Now let's see how this three data will help us to get the voltage regulation. So we are firstly uh, looking after synchronous impedance method which is also called as EMF method. So for this method what you will do is you will plot both the graphs together like the, on this graph you will take IF on X axis and open circuit voltage as well as short circuit current both on y axis how we will get the voltage regulation by this method let's see so basically we have plotted OCC uh, and SCC here and then we will calculate ZS now Z ZS is the synchronous impedance because we calculate voltage regulation by finding the synchronous impedance we say we also call this method synchronous impedance method okay now ZS is given by E0 by S ISC at same IF what do, what does this mean? This mean that what you need to do is you need to consider any current IF. Any particular point on IF, let's say I have considered point A on IF. Okay, now at this point I will draw a vertical line and on this vertical, this vertical line will intersect with OCC as well as SCC. So wherever it will intersect OCC, that point is the value of open circuit voltage at that IF. Similarly, like B like B is the point where you are getting uh, open circuit voltage for this particular IF. Similarly, the point where it will intersect SCC, that is the point C, that is the value of ISC at the same IF. So ZS, that is synchronous impedance, is given by this E0 at B point by ISC at C point, which is at the same IF field current. Clear? So then once we get the value of synchronous impedance, we will find out synchronous reactance. Okay. And how we will get synchronous reactance is simple. RA square plus XS square is equals to ZS square. So XS will be equals to root of ZS square minus RA square. This is how we will get the value of XS. Okay. Now we got the value of RA also. We also have plotted OCC. We also have plotted SCC. We also found the value of synchronous impedance. We also found the value of 
synchronous reactance now how we will get the value of voltage regulation to get the voltage regulation you first of all need to find out emf induced right so emf induced emf induced you will get from the phasor diagram now you have, we have already drawn phasor diagram in our last video okay to refer the phasor diagram video the link will be given in the description box and you can see how we have drawn phasor phasor diagram for lagging leading and unity power factor this is a lagging load power phasor diagram and here you can clearly see that the phasor diagram what you do is the same phasor diagram i have just tilted here for the clear understanding the same phasor diagram i've just tilted here for clear understanding and here you can see this phasor diagram as a right angle triangle right so these are the phasors v i i r a i x s and e not these are the phasors and these are some construction lines i have drawn to get the value of emf induced now to get the value of emf induced we are just going to apply pythagoras theorem here okay if you see this e not is nothing but hypotenuse of this right angle triangle so i have just drawn this construction line if you see this carefully e not will be equals to square root of this square plus this square right now this is what this if this is v this is right angle triangle so this is v cos phi v cos phi and this is exactly same as ira so this is v cos phi plus iara is this side of the triangle similarly v sin phi plus iaxs is this side of the triangle right so what we will do we will say e not is nothing but equals to root of v cos phi plus iara the whole square plus v sin phi iaxs the whole square if you want you can apply pythagoras theorem to this particular phasor diagram and you can find out this equation by yourself now once you got this value of e not you can easily find out the volt value of voltage regulation by using the formula e not minus v upon v into 100 now voltage regulation its formula all three phasor diagrams we have seen in our last video so go watch that video if you have missed that video okay this is the phasor diagram for lagging load and this is the emf induced for lagging load similarly this is the phasor diagram for leading load and this is the induced emf for leading load after getting uh, after applying the same formula to this phasor diagram you will realize in the emf equation for leading power factor the equation is same as it is though with the only difference that i excess is subtracted from v sin phi here so e not goes like root of v cos phi plus ira the whole square plus v sin phi minus i x s the whole square you can apply pythagoras theorem here also the construction line is given and accordingly you can get this equation similarly for unity power factor in unity power factor even if you will substitute the value of cos phi and sin phi in the lagging power factor equation you will get the equation for unity power factor e not is given by root of v plus i r a the whole square plus i x s the whole square so by using this three formula you can find out emf induced for unity lagging as well as leading power factor ultimately to get the voltage regulation we know voltage regulation is nothing but change in terminal voltage from no load to full load of course speed and field excitation being constant divided by full load voltage or as a percentage of full load voltage this is how we can find out percentage regulation which is given by e not minus v upon v into 100 right so getting e not by the synchronous impedance method v will be given to you at what power factor you need to find out will be given to you and you will find out voltage regulation so in today's class we have seen uh, how to find out voltage regulation with the help of synchronous impedance method again i repeat if if you want to clear your concept about phasor diagrams voltage equations and voltage regulation watch my previous videos the links will be given in the description box so if you understood the concept of finding out the voltage regulation with the help of synchronous impedance method give give this video a thumbs up share this video with your friends so that they can clear their understanding regarding same subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos related to electrical machines and press the bell button right next to it thank you and happy learning